Uh, yeah, it was uh, on a wreck search expedition last year, and, and uh, actually it was the last day, and we were on our way home with a leaking boat, and, and uh, well, we had had uh, lots of problems. And uh, we decided to um, to search for a wreck on our way home, uh, which I knew should be somewhere in that in that area. And uh, we we uh, put our search equipment in the water and we started and just an hour later this uh, circular object turned up on the monitor and uh, of course we were quite surprised uh, about how, how, how it uh, looked like but uh, we continued to search for the wreck and, and uh, later that day we were uh, heading for home so, so uh, we ended the expedition so we, so we never took a take a look at that time what it was. And when did you? Uh, and, and then you basically a whole year went by before you actually uh, kind of jumped on this. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it was first uh, of June. Uh, we had the possibility to go out again and uh, have a look at it. Is is that primarily because of uh, the weather and the conditions in in the Baltic Ocean, Peter? Or why did you wait so long there? Well. Uh, we uh, we couldn't uh, after September last year we, we couldn't uh, go out anymore because of the weather and and uh, in May or or June it was a good time to continue but uh, mostly it was lack of money that uh, uh, which did that we we couldn't go out last year again. That's right and and of course the the first time you you released the well the radar sonar scans I guess it is you can you can clarify more exactly what that is what we're looking at but. That caused a bit of a, a media storm a, a around the world. Did you guys uh, uh, try to approach some of the papers with this, or how did it come out for the first time in the in the mainstream media? It was my colleague Dennis that uh, actually called the newspaper uh, here in Sweden and uh, asked them, "May you be interested in this? Because we don't know what it is, and, and uh, if you print uh, the image in, in the newspaper, maybe someone can tell us." It was like that. And uh, well, they had a, a page with a, with an image of the sonar uh, image, and um, after that, everything went just berserk, <laughs> kind of. Absolutely. Now, uh, again, then maybe you can just describe a little bit for what it was that you find. You obviously know more now at this stage uh, than you did after the first expedition, but with everything you have, uh, the data available today, uh, describe it for us, uh, Peter. Uh, uh, last year we didn't really know. Uh, we could see it was a, a circular uh, object or something that was uh, nearly 60 meters across, and uh, it had a tail uh, which was like uh, 1,200 meters long or um, in the vicinity of that. And uh, but we didn't know really if it was uh, standing up above the bottom or it or if it was down into the bottom because. We had far from optimal uh, conditions when when we found it, but uh, now when we have uh, had a real look at it, we know that it's raising about uh, 50 meters above the bottom, so it's quite high. And uh, well, we thought maybe that uh, this will prob- most probably be a natural uh, thing. So. Uh, after the first expedition, we, we maybe we just have to say that okay, it's just a big rock. But uh, we got quite more uh, questions than os- answers after the first expedition. And Peter, was it the second uh, expedition when you went down with uh, with the divers f- for the first time and uh, an ROV as well? No, we had that on the first expedition. Uh, that uh, when we went down. Uh, went out on 1st of June. We had uh, divers and the uh, ROE with us. But uh, like, uh, I mean, at that, uh, the first expedition, for example, we found this round hole, uh, which uh, unfortunately the divers didn't found uh, later on. And uh, on the second expedition, we uh, had planned to, to take a look at this hole, if it was a deep hole or just a pit or something, but we couldn't find it. And that was quite odd. Of course, we have missed it in some way, but uh, well, that was one one question we didn't get the answer of for. 
there seems to be a very difficult waters to dive in and and maybe we can just talk a little bit about that the water seems very muggy up in the baltic and so it's difficult to get a a good overview unless you're very close to the object with lights and everything is that correct yeah we have a visibility of maybe half a meter and sometimes one meter so it's very very difficult to get an overview picture of it where we can't take a photograph and then see how it looks like we have a uh, kind of uh, quite sophisticated sonars on on the ROV, uh, which is very helpful, but uh, it still doesn't give us a, a real uh, visual image. And uh, the divers having problems, of course, it's uh, because of the visibility. And uh, last dives, they were quite strong current as well. Uh, so, uh, you know the the. the the surface is quite smooth, so they they have uh, quite problems to to hang on to it <laughs> when when the current starts. Oh wow! So they are actually drifting away a little bit, uh, to put it in that way. Yeah, yeah. Wow. They had to uh, if they wanted to go uh, against the current, uh, they, they uh, had to swim quite hard. And uh, as soon as they did, relaxed a bit, they just follow the current in the other direction. Oh wow! I did I did not know that. So that's very interesting. Now, um, how can we describe it in in, in shape wise? As you said, Peter, obviously it's it's resting upon something, and that seems to be uh, we don't know at this point. The latest update that's on your uh, website, OceanExplorer.se. You have a little bit of a drawing, I think, that you made as well of the ROV going down to try to find uh, the little crevice, if you will, between the actual circular object and and the bottom, which some has called been almost like a mushroom shape. Maybe you can describe this to us and what you know right now at this moment. Yeah, uh, on this uh, second expedition, we we found out that uh, it looks like these two things are separated, but we we don't really know for sure, but it it, it sure looks like it. And uh, it's uh, the lower part, the foundation or the pillar, as we call it, is about uh, five, uh, sorry, seven meters high and are about 60 meters across as well as as the upper part. And the upper part is uh, not uh, not exactly round, but very, very round shaped and and, uh, has this 60 meters across as well. Um, But the surface on the upper part is different from from the foundation. The foundation really looks like ordinary granite or uh, gneiss or what we call it, mm-hmm. ordinary ordinary rock for for uh, Scandinavia. While while the upper part seems to have be of another kind of material or mineral, it's much much smoother surface. What do you think could uh... The, the reasons for this could be, uh, I mean, if we're talking about a natural feature, which seems very unlikely at this stage, could it be that the the currents of the water has, has shaped this? It seems pretty much impossible, right? Well, I mean, of course, the possibility is there, but uh, we don't have, I mean, now we have like a knot or one and a half knot strong current. Uh, of course, maybe, maybe the currents have, have uh, shaped uh, this object looking like it uh, like it does today. I don't know really, but I don't think so. I don't think so. But uh, uh, we may may have found a volcano, and the lower part is the volcano uh, cone, and uh, the upper part is is in that case the magma, and uh, maybe it's shaped because uh, it has been uh, having an eruption during uh, the ice age so so the ice has shaped the the, the lava or the magma ah, i see so the maybe even the circular hole that you talked about earlier seem that could be part of of this basically where the magma or lava has come out from maybe yeah maybe it it, it is a possibility absolutely so so that's that's one theory if it's right, or if it's the true theory right now, I can't say, but it's very plausible. 
theory. Yeah, it, it's a very interesting. Now, just to clarify some things, obviously, you guys never said, you or Dennis, your, your partner, never said anything about this being a, a UFO. How, do, how did that be, begin? Uh, what, was that uh, one of the papers here in Sweden that started with that? Uh, yeah, they, they thought it looked like a UFO, but uh, as you say, we have never said it's a UFO. Uh, and, uh, I mean, people have been angry about that, that we can't uh, say it is, but I mean, we don't know when we say that it's probably a natural thing, even if it's very unique in its kind. So, but, well, we don't know really. Uh, exactly. <laughs> there are, yeah, there are, there are, we were finding so much strange things about it. So, uh, well, we'll see what happens on next expedition. Indeed, I'm going to ask you about some of these anomalies or, or uh, strange things that, that's happened around it because it's very interesting. Now, um, let's talk just a little bit about what, what's what's next here as well and what you found out on, on the last expedition, the second one you did, because we have, uh, I guess you guys are attempting to basically create a, a 3D model of, of the object. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we had, on, on the first expedition, we had uh, a multi-beam uh, equipment with us uh, and uh, that is a uh, equipment it works like a sonar but it it is shooting thousands of of uh, beams and uh, you're going back and forth over the area and uh, after a while <clears throat> you you can process the data and and make a 3 the uh, three dimensional image of the of the bottom or or, or the object uh, so, but of course we had some problems with that. So, the data is in a, at the company down in Denmark right now, and they are trying to 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 get this uh, three dimensional images out of the data. And uh, I think they will succeed because they have sent uh, well, quite a nice image up here. All right. But, uh how much do you yeah. know at this stage? And it's going to be uh, uh, people are very eager, of course. They're they're very curious about what this is and want to have <laughs> answers and all the rest. But do you have an ETA on on when uh, they might have have an image for you guys? Well, I guess uh, we will have uh, some nice images uh, within a couple of weeks. Uh, the problem here is, uh, and in Denmark, is that it is summer vacation times. And, uh, well, people want to go to their vacations, even that we have found uh, something very unusual. The whole of Scandinavia so shuts down, that's right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And all the, the samples we have taken from the object is uh, at Stockholm University, and they also have vacations. So we do, we, we do not get any answers as fast as we would like to. And, and of course, all, all our uh, followers followers at, at Facebook, our, our Facebook uh, page and so on so but uh, really we're just waiting now uh, t tell us about the third uh, you so you've been on two two so far and you're planning a, a third one there seems to be a, a window of time here as you said before because after a certain date here it, it's get difficult to go out there and the water and the weather and everything so when is that window closing and, and is the third one uh, the last one you're going to make this uh, this summer this year peter well, uh, I would say that the, the, the window closed at the uh, end of September. After that, it, well, of course, it might be some calm days, but we will have less than 50% of the time. Uh, I, I mean, we will be able to work less than 50% of the time, and then it's just money in the water. Uh, but uh, on the third expedition, I hope we will be on our way within two or three weeks and uh, I also I hope that we will have some uh, real scientists with us because we are just treasure hunters so I mean we are kind of uh, tumbling around in the dark right now. Who, who would you uh, need a, a geologist perhaps and or something else? Well I, I think that the best would be to have uh, like uh, maybe two or three different kinds of scientists because uh, like the, the volcano theory is completely uh, shut down by the geologists. They are saying, no, it's not possible with the volcano. It hasn't been any 
uh, tectonic activities there for millions of years, so it cannot be a volcano. So, I mean, I think we need two or three different scientists that can think in in in, in uh, different directions. And they would have to uh, dive and go down there, or how would you solve solve this problem? No, uh, I, uh, we will use the ROE and also, of course, the divers. But if they are with us, they can tell us, okay, I want to have a look on that and that and that and, and stop there. We, we we must film that a bit more. And because, uh, I mean, okay, we're trying to, to uh, see as much as possible with, uh, with the equipment we have. But I mean, we are not making any kind of uh, scientific reports or anything. So, uh, I mean, it would be better to have a couple of real scientists with us. Absolutely. Now, there's, if you go back to the object for a moment here, there seems to be, uh, I guess, four different parts of it, if we can put it that way. There's the pillar that you mentioned, and then we have the main circular uh, concrete type of object on, on, on top of that pillar. Um, as far as I understood it, there is some kind of bubble almost or sphere somewhere on the circle. And then also there is a is a, is a ring of stones is is that um, pretty much it that this on the, and there is a hole as well as you mentioned but beyond that is there anything else or, or anything uh, on on top or, or additionally to the main complex or object object peter yeah the, we have the track uh, which is a kind of a ridge and uh, it's like thousands of meter long and uh, of course, it's connected to the object, but, but how, we don't know. I mean, if it is uh, remains that it's uh, grinded off the object by the ice, or if the ridge is there because of some other reasons, we don't know. We haven't had a look at the ridge yet, uh, visually or, or uh, by divers or anything. So uh, the, the ridge is uh, a, a question mark so far. Is this the one with the on top of the object that have 90 degree uh, angles kind of thing? And uh, well, we have had look had a look at the angles and and uh, well, they are there and and they are very straight uh, and angular. Uh, but if it is because of natural causes, I don't know. The geologists say that uh, uh, rock can crack like that, so it get these very angular shaped uh, cracks and, and uh, formations. Absolutely. Now, uh, um, the, the geologists you have talked with, have they, uh, I guess, volunteered their time to, to look into this, or did you have to, to hire them, if you will, to make an opinion on, on, on your findings so far? No, we, we haven't uh, had to pay them so far, but uh, I, I guess they're quite interested as well. Uh, so, uh, the geologist we have talked to, um, he has just looked at the ROV images and, and uh, we have shown him the, the sonar images and so on, but uh, he hasn't been there himself. Uh, but but the geologist, he, he looked at it in a very geologist way as well. And uh, if, if we talk to a biologist, he starts to say, well, the hole, it's strange that it's gone. Maybe it's an organism. And, uh, well, what, what can we say about that? So <laughs> it depends on what, what kind of scientists they are. That's right. It's it's very compartmentalized in, in, indeed. And, and, and you guys are kind of in the center of this and try to keep tie together all the all the loose ends. And, and they are indeed loose at this stage. Now, ha- have you managed to take any samples from the... Uh, object or, or some parts of the object yet? Yes, uh, we have taken some loose stones that are laying, like you mentioned, the ring of, of the stones. Uh, there are stones uh, strewn around at some places on the on the object, and, and uh, I guess it's from the Ice Age. Uh, I have got the question many times if I think it's uh, co- uh, construction, and I'm saying that we have this very strange uh, stair formations, uh, and if it is constructed, it must be constructed tens of thousands of years ago, before the Ice Age. Uh, and uh, then the ice has done, uh, grinded off uh, a lot of things and, and, uh, and so on, <clears throat> but that's because all the loose stones are laying around.
W- would the oh you mean so when the ice have melted the, it, the stones have dropped off maybe from the ice and just landed on on the on top of the object? Yes. Exactly. So the rings seem to be separate and I, and I recall I heard another interview with you Peter and you mentioned something about there seems to be a soot or something on the stones is that correct? Yeah, they uh, some of them all have uh, this very black uh, soot uh, and and you can uh, you can scrape it off with your fingers. And uh, one of the loose stones that uh, we brought up was a uh, basalt stone. And uh, the geologist said that, okay, the nearest place for these kind of basalt is uh, the middle ridge uh, in, in uh, the Atlantic. Really? Uh, so, yeah, so that, that was quite, quite strange. And the reason why we took that stone was because it was very black and didn't have any kind of uh, sediment on it, or very, very little sediment. Uh, stones laying uh, beside it had sediment, but uh, this one hadn't. So, so we took it because of that. And, and uh, well, that's also a big question: What does that basalt stone do in there when it probably comes from the Atlantic? Very interesting. Quite, yeah, it's 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 quite far away. Very strange. Now, and, and the soot, of course, as many people have pointed out, could be. Uh, Carbon-14 dated, I guess. Is this something you guys are doing, and are you awaiting results at this point, or what's uh, happening with that? Uh, we're waiting for the results, but I don't think you can do carbon uh, measuring on, on soot. But uh, they can uh, they can decide the age of the, of the rocks uh, in some way, using acid and, you know, okay. these kind of things. Oh. So uh, hopefully we will get these answers also when the vacations are over. Indeed. So there's a lot of waiting for you guys right now. Are you uh, planning the, the the third expedition and pretty much set to go for that, or is there more more work to do on this, Peter? Uh, it's it's not it's more work to. Uh, I mean, we have to plan it the next expedition, and uh, as I said, we need to get some scientists with us uh, to, to make a serious expedition because, uh, as it is now, as I said before, we're tumbling around in the dark and then we're doing as, as good as we can. And, uh, but it's not enough. It's, it's too much questions. Indeed. And, uh, there's obviously a, a draw here because something is mysterious enough to keep you guys going with this and, and I want to have answers. So, I mean, therefore it, it must be, it seems like there's something else. I mean, for example, let's talk about this thing about the uh, your gear being affected in some way. There seems to be a disruption when you use certain electronics. Uh, tell us about this. Oh, well, yeah, we have had lots of problems with all the electronics. And, uh, and the diver's cameras uh, broke down and... Uh, so on and so on, and we had the cable to the ROV had a real uh, uh, short circuit, which burnt a hole through the cable. And well, yeah, well, I don't know what to say. There have been a lot of problems, but if it is related to the object or not, I can't tell really. Now, do you have any guesses at this point? I've heard a lot of people around speculate when they heard this that it's some kind of causing this surge in, in energy there's it's electromagnetic magnetic it's uh, some kind of uh, almost electromagnetic pulse uh, would acts like a shield some people have talked about this being a part of a torsion field and everything else any, any comments on this peter <laughs> well, well not really but we have done uh, i mean we have tried to find out if it is a magnetic field but it but it isn't uh, there are no problems with the compasses, uh, but we have done <coughs> a measuring with a, a frequentometer, which uh, you use to, to find out, out if there are any kind of uh, radio uh, transmissions and so on. If uh, Well, anyway, we have done that, but we doesn't have the result yet. And uh, that will be a, a very interesting to see what what would come out of it. Absolutely. Is there anything test-wise that you guys would like to do, but maybe you haven't had access to that type of uh, gear or, or technology yet? 
Yeah, I would like to actually make a core, drill a core and take a core sample right through uh, the, the object and down uh, through the, the foundation and, and probably as deep as possible just to find out uh, what it is, really. And I think uh, that is one thing you have to do before you, you get a uh, real answer. W- would that be difficult uh, to do? No, it's not difficult, but it costs a lot of money. So uh, yeah. uh, we will not spend that kind of money because we don't have it. But uh, it's uh, possible, absolutely. So with that in mind, then, since this is you know limiting in that sense, because uh, you know, as you say, things cost uh, money. Specifically, this you know kind of big project that this is now has the. Authorities around the Baltic said anything at this? Governments, uh, uh, other kinds of institutions from either Sweden or, or, or Finland, have they commented anything or contacted you or have you tried to contact them, Peter? Uh, the only authority that has contacted us uh, is the Swedish military. And they just told us that uh, if it is on Swedish waters, you are not allowed to uh, record uh, sea floor mapping because it's of natural uh, national security reasons. But uh, when I told them, well, it's not on Swedish waters, they just said, okay, then we know, bye bye. So not, nothing more than that. Huh. So uh, there's no international waters in the Baltic. Is this, is it on Finnish waters then? Uh, there is uh, uh, international waters in the Baltic, but. Uh, uh, there are still uh, economical zones uh, everywhere, so it's well, it's not like uh, nat- uh, international waters, uh, but uh, economical zones they are working as uh, international water regulations. Okay, I, I see. I, I recall I watched a video uh, that Dennis put up on on uh, either his or, or both of you guys' YouTube channel, and he was uh, it was in Swedish, and it was quite. Uh, well, he had a lot of things to say about the, the stupid laws around this, and, and there's a lot of bureaucracy and a lot of things that seems to just put, um, you know, sticks in the wheel, so to speak, to, to, to stop the effort. What, what would you like to see to, what would ease things up, I guess, if you share Dennis' opinion on this? Uh, well, I I think he was also talking about uh, wrecks in, in, uh, and, and, and not just about this uh, object. Right, yeah. Uh, uh, and uh well if it is stupid regulations or not i i mean it's, it's some kind of, sometimes it's it's good they there because uh, like we don't want to find these very old wrecks just being plundered as well because it's it's nice to have them there and and for all all, all people to view but in the same time, it's it's. Uh, I mean, if you have a modern wreck, and, and let's say it's a cargo that which we are interested in, and it's uh, less than one hundred year old, yes, then it's uh, big problems. Uh, and uh, well, I I can can just say that uh, I agree with them. It's it's uh, they are making things more difficult than than it should have to be. Yeah. I, I understand that now. Do you um, do you guys have anybody in mind that you potentially could ask either for you know I know this is this is tricky because obviously the, it's your find you want to uh, you know try to decide or control I guess to a certain degree what happens from now on and out. But is there anybody you could ask for help? And again, I guess I'm just fascinated that um, no one maybe has has contacted you maybe from from the government or authorities that, that are interested in this and would, would like to have some some answers to it but um any any thoughts on this anybody that could that could help out with this money wise or gear wise uh money wise uh, we will not find any help uh, maybe we will get uh, help from the stockholm university with the scientists uh, and that would be quite nice and uh, i guess that that is the only kind of help we will find or get have you uh, have you tr- have you contacted them about this or maybe you will do this this uh, fall uh, peter 
Yeah, we we are, we are in discussions with them. Not not like okay, can you go out in two weeks? But uh, sure, sure. I mean, uh, since we have left all the samples to them, and and uh, they will do the work with that. So uh, yeah, we we have a collaboration with them already. So uh, I think uh, if uh, we will bring some scientists, it will be from from Stockholm University. Very interesting. Now, uh, did you manage to get some? A video material as well uh, of this from the ROV. Does that have video capabilities? Yeah, uh, from the first expedition, yes. From the second expedition, no, because of course uh, we have this DVD uh, hard disk uh, recorder, and uh, well, it didn't want to work with us, so we just uh, could <laughs> look at the monitor uh, while we were driving the ROV, but we couldn't record anything. And, uh, well, that's also a thing about these electronics breakdowns. Indeed. Uh, very, very strange. Now, uh, another question about the location. I guess, I, I again, I understand you're very reluctant to give away the location for obvious reasons. But could you say if it's closer to Finland than to uh, to Sweden? Do you, have, do you guys have a long way to go, if I put it that way? Yeah, it's... Uh, we're talking about uh, 20. Four hours from Stockholm, oh, and wow. uh, yeah. Yeah, it's quite—it's uh, in the middle, kind of. It's uh, the same distance to Finland as as it is to Sweden. So, kind of in the right in the middle there of the Baltic. Now, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's talk about some of the theories that have been coming out as well, and I want to get your take on this, even if it's speculation. And it seems to me as well, Peter, that. Uh, the, the more you find out about the object, the, the the less you you know. The more the more questions you have, right? That seems to be the case. Yeah. Yes, it is. So it's pretty much impossible to say what it is at this stage. Is that correct? Yeah, it is impossible. We, uh, we can uh, agree on uh, a few theories, but uh, we can't tell that it is this or that. I heard from one of the uh, World War II uh, experts. I think it was in Aftonbladet, one of the um, you know newspapers here in Sweden, talked about uh, this being an anti-Nazi, you know, submarine uh, thing. Basically, they, it was part of a of a metal mesh constructed, and that there was a concrete uh, weight on that. But uh, as the article uh, detail, of course, it's just basically too. It's too big for this. Uh, it's it's way oversized. Yes, it is. And uh, as I said before, if it is a construction in any way, it's uh, thousands of years old. So it's not from the wars and it's not from, I mean, we're talking, when when did the Ice Age start? Like 100,000 years ago. But then we had some middle time when they think the ice was gone for 10 or 20,000 years. So it might be more than 100,000 years old or like 40 or 50,000 years old if it is a construction in any way. That's right. You you describe it as some kind of uh, concrete. Uh, it, it looks like it's been um, molded or, or shaped in, in, in some way. And hopefully then, Peter, the samples will... will uh, well, the samples are from the ring, correct? So you've actually haven't taken samples from this the main circular concrete ob- object. Is that correct? Well, the last samples the divers took was... <laughs> from uh, the top of of uh, the circle, so uh, hopefully we will we'll get an answer of what that is of what kind of material. In the video as well that uh, Dennis had, he he mentioned. Uh, I, I guess he didn't go into it. He, he talked about basically a st- overall strangeness around ar- around him, and and I guess you as well starting to. Uh, to happen. Is this anything you want to or can comment on, Peter? Uh, well, no, I don't want to comment anything. <laughs> I, I mean, if uh, what happens with Dennis, but, uh, well, uh, no, I, I, I don't want to comment that. Okay, <laughs> we'll leave it off. And <laughs> you guys are, are, are also participatory right now with uh, with a production company of, of actually filming and detailing the, the whole story. Is, is that correct? Yes, uh, they are doing a documentary, so uh, they are following us on on our expeditions. Well, so that's going to be really exciting. I, I guess there are things there as well that you haven't been able to uh, to talk about yet, and there are maybe more aspects to this that haven't been revealed at that stage. This stage is that is that correct? 
Yes, uh, we have a few uh, aces up our sleeves, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not we're not doing it to. to, to I mean, many people are are telling us that uh, we are just a big hoax and so on, but we're not. We're we don't know what it is, and and uh, but uh, of course to to uh, save a few things for the documentary, we are not telling everything. So it we we will reveal some quite quite interesting things in in the documentary. Very interesting. Now, and this could be, uh, uh, well, depends on how long this goes on, I guess, because the more and more is revealed, the more the longer you, you know you're going to work with the team and film this and 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 detail it. And and for all we know, Peter, this could go on for quite some time if if you guys don't get any proper help. Is that correct? Yes, uh, I mean, uh, if we do this third expedition, I don't think it will be a fourth this year. But uh, I, I guess the documentary will be uh, uh, like part one, at least. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, so then they continue next year in that case. And is there any release uh, date set for this yet, or are you holding off at this stage? I I really don't know what what the production company is planning, but uh, I guess it will be something. I mean, before end of this year, at least. Definitely now. Broadcasting, yeah. Okay, really interesting. Uh, people have uh, speculated about it being a, a a meteor or something otherwise incoming. Is is that still a possibility in your view? Yeah, yeah, it might be. I, I, I personally do, do not think it's a meteor or asteroid uh, that has um, just hit the water or the sea floor, and because it should be a crater and everything. But uh, someone had a theory that it might have hit the ice, and if the ice was like uh, two thousand or three thousand meters thick, it might uh, have uh, well penetrated the ice uh, a couple of thousand meters and and then it has just fell down when when the ice melted away so yeah maybe if it is 10,000 or so years ago if it is uh, uh, connected in some way to the uh, the melting of the last ice age this opens up a, a can of worms um so, so to speak if it is indeed is a some kind of made uh, made object, either man-made or, or, or again, who, who the heck knows? This, uh, this is obviously touching upon an area that many other people have talked about before. Uh, theories ranging um, everything from Atlantis-type civilizations to everything else. Is this something you ever were interested in, Peter, or is this just is this a brand new world for you, so to speak, with the, when these kinds of ideas are, are entering into that? No, it's not. Uh, a new world for me because I'm I'm very interested in history and all kind of it and uh, of course uh, I've also heard uh, stories about Atlantis and that it uh, should be on the bottom somewhere and uh, well I have also had the thoughts uh, I well I don't really believe in the Atlantis uh, story but if it is there somewhere of course I would like to find it um, but if this is Atlantis, well, <laughs> that would be quite amazing. It's kind of small, but uh, <laughs> no, but the thing is, it could be one of the objects or something like that. It could be a, uh, any kind of relationship at this point. We don't know. But it's the fact is that it's, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. And again, the more you guys have been looking into this, the stranger it seems to get. Is there is there anything else that has, that has happened or, or that... You guys know about at this stage that we haven't talked about that is like an, an important feature either of the object or, or something that's been happening or changed or recorded or anything like that. Uh, well, I can mention that we have this second anomaly which we haven't had a look at all uh, so far, and uh, that's a thing that's still a real big question mark. And uh, hopefully on our third expedition, we'll be able to have a look at that as well. And if that is of a similar, we know that it isn't round, but it looks like it has very angular sides. And if that also looks uh, kind of constructed, I, I mean, then we're probably looking at something that might be a construction that is very, very old. Indeed. And then, then, 
and these are, are two parts of it or whatever it is. That's right. But again, actually, if we go back and, and look at the first uh, sonar images again, there is it's also a, a second object or, or something further up in the in the picture image there. Uh, what is that, Peter? Tell us about that. Uh, that is the second anomaly, and, and uh, we haven't we haven't been looking at that yet. But hopefully, on the third expedition, we will be able to do that. Is that far far away from it? No, it's like uh, two uh, two hundred two hundred meters or so from the circle. Ah, interesting. And and is it about uh, similar? It's a little smaller, I think, right? Yeah, it's. Uh, about 40 meters uh, from, from uh, side to side and uh, yeah 40 by 30 meters or something Interesting. and uh, it's not it's not it's not raising uh, 15 meters above the bottom but it's uh, still uh, like 10 meters okay. above the bottom yeah 10 meters so 70 it's very strange that it's up so high this is object is that the main reason why it stood out to you for the first time, or is it just simply the the shape of of the object itself because it's so anomalous to the rest of the seafloor? No, it it was because of the shape because we didn't know how how high it was uh, last year when we found it. We found that out uh, now on on the first expedition. And this this stair like feature that you mentioned that's is that in the in the center on the side of this the circle? It is. Uh, well, it, it looks like these stair formations are going from the bottom and uh, the, the foundation is a part of it. And then uh, the, these formations are going to the top of the circle. Yeah. But they are like one meter each uh, stair. So uh, it's, I, I, well, I don't think it's an ordinary people. Uh, can walk in these stairs in that case, but uh, well, they're there and they look like stairs. Hmm. And, and then we have to return to that again a little bit and describe it. That's a more the little sphere or whatever it is that it's on, on top of the the main object. Is is that uh, is that pretty much in the same uh, type of concrete material, or, or does it look differently to you? Yeah, it it has this uh, smooth. Uh, surface which looks like concrete as you say but uh, it's it's probably not concrete uh and and this uh meringue as we call it uh it's of the same material as the uh, circle itself okay i see interesting so it's just like a smaller version of that but on top of it almost yeah yes okay uh if it is very, very old, I again, I don't know, and maybe you know that, Peter, because you're more accustomed to the Baltic Sea and the conditions up there. But wouldn't the the object be covered in, in I don't know, sedimentary, la- sedimentary layers of, of, of mud or dirt or, or something like that if it's been there for a very, very long time? Well, it is a very, very thin layer of sediment. But, uh, well, if we have these currents on, on uh, like one, uh, one and a half knot, uh, maybe that is enough to to uh, to take all the sediment away, and uh, what is left is just a kind of slimy layer. Uh, so, but I I really don't know. Uh, I I usually doesn't look at um, similar for formations or uh, uh, I should say uh, rocks that are standing up uh, on the bottom. So I don't know how how much sediment there usually is okay i see um I'm, I'm looking at some of the images here as well that that uh came out and and if if there is a a third or sorry a, another expedition let's say last year uh, next year then 2013 uh peter is there any way that you think that it could be lit up more if you had stronger stronger lights per se would it be possible to get a bigger overview picture in your opinion about of the object uh well we probably could get a few meters more visibility but uh still it's it's because of the silt in the water but uh i guess um uh sometimes in the baltic you may have suddenly like 5 or 10 or 15 meters uh, visibility so i guess 
uh, we just have to stay there till we get these conditions if we want to have a real nice uh, overview images. Ah, I, I see. Have have you uh, when you've been out on on the other expeditions? Has this uh, ever happened? I mean, I guess what I'm asking is it is it fairly often it happens, or is it very very rare with the visibility? Well, uh, it, it uh, depends on which part of the Baltic uh, we're talking about. But uh, as an example, when we salvaged uh, champagne from the Jönköping wreck yeah. in 1997 and 1998, uh, on 43 dives. Uh, during a period of eight days, we had one dive with uh, a visibility of five meters. The other dives, uh, we had uh, half a meter. Oh boy! So yeah, yeah. So it's 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 not like okay, uh, in middle of June we have good visibility. It's, it's impossible to say. It might be between twelve and three o'clock, and then it's bad visibility again. Right. Yeah. So you can't plan plan for it. Exactly, I, I understand that. Now, so it's again just to go back to that point and re-emphasize that for our listeners. It's really the the three D uh, representation that is going to give you at this point anyway the the best uh, visual uh, idea of of how it looks. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And that's because we we, we brought that equipment because I, I knew that we will not have any possibility to get a, a good overview uh, otherwise absolutely and uh, remind us again what when is the uh, when did you plan for the third expedition here it's uh, t- towards uh, mid august or later no mid august but not later than mid september absolutely and uh, any precautions you can take when it comes to the disturbances of the uh, of the gear that is electric i mean again i guess what happened last time uh, was that it it's not functioning when you're close, but then when you come out, when you go away from the object, it, it starts working again after what x amount of of meters, or is it time related? Do you think? Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> difficult. Huh? No, yeah. I, I would say it's uh, it's uh, in that case uh, if we're like 500 meters away, uh, everything seems to work well. And uh, if we get closer, uh, we we have more problems with the electronics. Have you ever had anything similar like this happening before? Oh, of course. I mean, uh, you know, electricity and water they they doesn't belong together. So uh, <laughs> it will always be problems. Uh, and uh, when we are out searching for wrecks, of course, things happen all the time. But uh, maybe not as much as it has been like now. Very strange. It's it's absolutely fascinating uh, story, and and I know how much you guys are, are are working with this right now as well, and 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 trying to both I guess raise money and the, and and the interest is there. And and has this been difficult, or has it been easy to find? I know that Dennis in the video again mentioned. Uh, you guys were looking for, well, basically for sponsors to be able to continue with doing that. Has that gone well at this stage? No, it hasn't gone well. Uh, there is a lot of interest, but I think, I mean, it's easier to, to sponsor a, a sportsman or a sportswoman because uh, they are doing something that you understand. Uh, but uh, to sponsor this, that uh, might be... Uh, something very unexplainable it's it's uh, uh they don't dare really but they are very interested so uh, we yeah. have we yeah, we have had quite this difficult difficulties to, to find sponsors and and uh, of course we need them and and for a sponsor uh, i mean with the media interest we have and uh, we have had hundreds of millions of viewers so far i mean with all the uh, TV features. Uh, it would have been a golden opportunity for a sponsor if they t- would t- to take care of the uh, marketing value. Yes, exactly, and uh, that's interesting. No one is they're kind of kind of chicken in that way. Have you tried internationally as well, or s- Swedish, or only companies? Yeah, we have tried uh, a lot of. Uh, different kind of companies and and uh, yes we have been in contact with uh, virgin as well 
and they were also interested, but uh, you know they have their own uh, things going on and and so. But uh, we'll see. Uh, we have started to sell uh, clothes, so maybe we will get uh, going to be our own sponsor. <laughs> you have to have uh, James Cameron help you out with this little uh, submarine there. <laughs> uh, yeah, we haven't heard anything from him. Yet. <laughs> now, uh, but and I, I, I heard as well again then from from uh, Dennis. He mentioned that you're not, I guess, accepting help from individuals because you had a little mishap in the beginning and it didn't turn out. So you kind of got uh, sidetracked on that for a while and you ended up losing a lot of time. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, we have had uh, three or four uh, people, or uh, what do you say, not communities, but well, they have. Uh, what they have tried, I don't know. Maybe they thought we had a lot of money, and then they tried to rip off, rip us off, oh, really. And yes. and we lost a lot of time. So uh, it started uh, in uh, August last year, and uh, well, so in total we have lost maybe four or five months because of this. Yeah. Hmm. Now. And and so the way I guess you're 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 accepting help from from individuals, people out there listening who wants to support you guys and want to make sure it's happening, is that is the best way then to basically get some of your uh, apparel, some of your gear that you have on the website, or, or how do people do that? Yeah, I, I, we have had uh, quite a lot of questions about uh, how they do if they want to do uh, donate money, and we are saying we are a commercial company and we don't want to. We don't accept donations. It doesn't feel good. So, if they believe in this and they they want to help us in some way, uh, it's better to, to buy the apparel, as you say. Okay. And uh, that's that's why we we started with that. Okay. So that in indirectly, that's a way to donate. Then basically, that's what you're saying. Yeah, that's a way of helping us with getting money, so we can can continue this this adventure. Well, there you go. There you, there you have it. I mean, it's uh, basic stuff. Then uh, help the guys out if you want to see this uh, happening. I certainly will because it's it's a fascinating story. It's it's uh, this could be a really really big discovery. It could be could it be also Peter that it. it I mean, what would what would happen? I guess if if um, it, it's decided. I guess would you would you trust even that if there was a geologist uh, basically come along and say no, it's a it's a natural uh, feature. They explain this and that. Would you just drop it and, and let it go or would you feel like no I, I want to know more I want to have more data about this uh, well I, I will not settle down with just the word from one, one geologist uh, but if uh, we have a, a few of them s- saying the same thing then of course we will say uh, I mean yeah you're probably right and, and we will leave this behind us now uh, if we can't get that kind of answers of course it will be a an open book still but i mean it's it's a day after tomorrow as well and we have to to live and, and think of our ordinary life so we have to start uh, continue with our researching yes yeah, so, so uh, exactly you you do, are you doing are you capable of doing this at the same time or have you put that to the side for now no, we have uh, done a few uh, things uh, on the side uh, when we're going out to the site and back and so on. So uh, when we have had all this equipment on the boat, we have take the chance, so to speak, uh, to, to look for some wrecks. Absolutely. We're going to round things off here in a, in a little bit. Again, I want to just give out the website, oceanexplorer.se. That's where you can follow along in this and and uh, again they were basically waiting for results a third expedition is coming uh waiting for for the results from the from the second one is there something that you're going to do during the third one that is also going to um take time to analyze or to to wait for if it's samples or anything like that uh actually the website is oceanxteam.com but uh that's okay. Uh, yeah, we will do. Uh, we will probably take some more samples in different ways, uh, and we have to wait for the answers of the results. 
Okay, really good. Uh, OceanXteam.com. Uh, that's right. I just get uh, uh, relayed to OceanExplore.se when I do that. That's probably because I'm in Sweden, uh, Peter. But in any regard, yeah. OceanXteam.com. Uh, that's the website. All right. Well, if, if there's anything else, Peter, you'd like to mention, please go do so in the last few, uh, few minutes here. This has been fascinating talking with you directly, hearing more about the object. And, and at this stage, uh, basically... Uh, waiting and, and and more waiting to see on the results and and uh, basically get more uh, more data. Anything else, uh, Peter? You want to mention? Uh, oh boy! <laughs> no, it's it's. Uh, I want to say that uh, people out there who are interested in this uh, must be patient. And uh, I know that uh, they are walking around and, and want uh, answers uh, today or yesterday, uh, but uh, they must be patient. It takes time, this. And, uh, well, we must be patient as well. We would like to be out there right now, but we have to wait till the things as well for money and uh, to get the, the right gear on the boat and so on. So be patient. Well, exactly. That's a good point. I heard Dennis say that as well. There's uh, things happen, things break down. You, you guys have been waiting even for spare parts coming in from from Germany and stuff like that. Every, everything everything takes time, and I think, as you say, that's something people don't understand. It's like, what are they waiting for? Just just go out there and and, and dive, you know. <laughs> yeah, but uh, when we went down, uh, went out on first of June, we had uh, divers and all we with us. But, uh, like, uh, I mean, at that, uh, the first expedition, for example, we found this round hole, uh, which, uh, unfortunately, the divers didn't found uh, later on. And uh, on the second expedition, we uh, had planned to, to take a look at this hole, if it was a deep hole or just a pit or something. But we couldn't find it, and that was quite odd. Of course, we had missed it in some way, but, uh, well, that was one one question we didn't get the answer of for there seems to be a very difficult waters to dive in and and maybe we can just talk a little bit about that the water seems very muggy up in the baltic and so it's difficult to get a a good overview unless you're very close to the object with lights and everything is that correct yeah we have a visibility of maybe half a meter and sometimes one meter so it's very very difficult to get them overview picture of it where we can't take a photograph and then see how it looks like we have a, a kind of a quite sophisticated sonars on on the rov uh, which is very helpful but uh, it still doesn't give us a, a real uh, visual image and uh, the divers having problems of course it's uh, because of the visibility and uh, last dives, they were quite concurrent as well. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the 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 surface is quite smooth, so they they have uh, quite problems to to hang on to it <laughs> when when the current starts. Oh wow! So they are actually drifting away a little bit, uh, to put it in that way. Yeah, yeah. Wow. They had to uh, if they wanted to go uh, against the current, uh, they, they uh, had to swim quite hard. And uh, as I stated, relaxed a bit. They just follow the current in the other direction. Uh, yeah, it was uh, on a wreck search expedition last year, and and uh, actually it was the last day, and we were on our way home with a leaking boat, and and uh, well, we had had uh, lots of problems, and uh, we decided to. Um, to search for a wreck on our way home, uh, which I knew should be somewhere in that in that area, and uh, we we uh, put our search uh, equipment in the water and we started. And just an hour later, this uh, circular object turned up on the monitor, and uh, of course we were quite surprised uh, about how 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 it uh, looked like. But uh, we continued to search for the wreck, and, and uh, later that day we we uh, heading for home. So so uh, we ended the expedition. So we so we never took a take a look at that time what it was. And when did you? Uh, and, and then you, basically a whole year went by before we actually uh, kind of jumped on this. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it was first uh, of June. Uh, we had the possibility to go out again and uh, have a look at it. 
Is is that primarily because of uh, the weather and the conditions in in the Baltic Ocean, Peter? Or why did you wait so long there? Well, uh, we uh, we couldn't uh, after September last year. We, we couldn't uh, go out anymore because of the weather. And, and uh, in May or or June, it was a good time to continue. But uh, mostly, it was lack of money that uh, uh, which did that we we couldn't go out last year again. That's right, and and of course the the first time you you released the well the radar sonar scans I guess it is you can you can clarify more exactly what that is what we're looking at but that caused a bit of a, a media storm a, a around the world. Did you guys uh, uh, try to approach some of the papers with this, or how did it come out for the first time in the in the mainstream media? It was my colleague Dennis that uh, actually called the newspaper. Uh, here in Sweden and uh, ask them, may you be interested in this because we don't know what it is and, and uh, if you print uh, the image in, in the newspaper, maybe someone can tell us. It was like that. And, uh, well, they had a, a page with a, with an image of the sonar uh, image and um, after that everything went just berserk, <laughs> kind of. Absolutely. Now, uh, again, then maybe you can just describe a little bit for what it was that you find. You obviously know more now at this stage uh, than you did after the first expedition. But with everything you have, uh, the data available today, uh, describe it for us, uh, Peter. Uh, uh, last year, we didn't really know. Uh, we could see it was a, a circular uh, object or something that was nearly 60 meters across. And uh, it had a tail uh, which was like uh, 1,200 meters long or um, in the vicinity of that. And, uh, but we didn't know really if it was uh, standing up above the bottom or, it, or if it was down into the bottom because we had far from optimal uh, conditions when, when we found it. But uh, now when we have uh, had a real look at it, we know that it's racing about uh, 50 meters above the bottom, so it's quite high. And uh, well, we thought maybe that uh, this will prob- most probably be a natural uh, thing. So uh, after the first expedition, we, we maybe we just have to say that okay, it's just a big rock. But uh, we got quite more uh, questions than os- answers after the first expedition. And Peter, was it the second uh, expedition when you went down with uh, with the divers f- for the first time and uh, an ROV as well? No, we had that on the first expedition, Rex. Oh wow, I did I did not know that. So that's very interesting. Now, um, how can we describe it in in, in shape wise? As you said, Peter, obviously it's it's resting upon something, and that seems to be uh, we don't know at this point. The latest update that's on your uh, website, Ocean Explorer. Dot .se you have a little bit of a drawing i think that you made as well of the rov going down to try to find uh, the little crevice if you will between the actual circular object and and the bottom which some has called been almost like a mushroom shape maybe you can describe this to us and what you know right now at this moment yeah uh, on this second expedition we we found out that uh, it looks like these two things are separated but we we don't really know for sure, but it, it, it sure looks like it. And uh, it's uh, the lower part, the foundation or the pillar, as we call it, is about uh, five, uh, sorry, seven meters high and are about 60 meters across as well as, as the upper part. And the upper part is uh, not uh, not exactly round, but very, very round shaped and and uh, has this 60 meters across as well um, but the surface on the upper part is different from from the foundation the foundation really looks like ordinary granite or uh, gneiss or what we call it mm-hmm. ordinary ordinary rock for for uh, scandinavia while, while the upper part seems to have be of another kind of material or mineral it's much much smoother surface what do you think could uh, the the reasons for this could be uh i mean if we're talking about a natural feature which seems very unlikely at this stage 
could it be that the the current of the water has has shaped this? It seems pretty much impossible, right? Well, I mean, of course, the possibility is there, but uh, we don't have. I mean, now we have uh, like a knot or one and a half knot strong current. Uh, of course, maybe maybe the currents have, have uh, shaped uh, this object looking like it uh, like it does today. I don't know really, but I don't think so. I don't think so. But uh, uh, we might may have found a volcano, and the lower part is the volcano uh, cone. And uh, the upper part is, is, in that case, the magma. And uh, maybe it's shaped because uh, it has been uh, having an eruption during uh, the Ice Age. So, so the ice has shaped the, the, the lava or the magma. Ah, I see. So the, maybe even the circular hole that you talked about earlier, seem, that could be part of, of this, basically, where the magma or lava has come out from, maybe? Yeah, maybe. It, it it is a possibility, absolutely. So so that's that's one theory. If it's right, or if it's the true theory right now, I can't say. But it, it's a very plausible theory. Yeah, it, it's very interesting. Now, just to clarify some things, obviously, you guys never said you or Dennis, your, your partner, never said anything about this being a, a UFO. How did, how did that be, begin? Uh, what was that? Uh, one of the papers here in Sweden that started with that? Oh, yeah, they, they thought it looked like a UFO, but uh, as you say, we have never said it's a UFO. Uh, and uh, I mean, people have been angry about that, that we can't uh, say it is. But I mean, we don't know when we say that it's probably a natural thing, even if it's very unique in its kind. So, but, well, we don't know really. <laughs> exactly. There are still, there are, there, we were finding so much strange things about it so uh well we'll see what happens on 